Hi. What I got out here at the range today is a Dan Wesson model 15-2. Now these guns, are, their main claim to fame is that the barrels are interchangeable on them. Easily by the user. And later on in the video I'll show you how to change the barrel on them. This particular one has five barrels with it. What's got on it right now is a eight inch barrel. As you can see here we got a two and a half inch one, a four inch one, and a six inch one. And wrapped up in this cloth here is a fifth one that uh, is ten inches. Also got an extra grip there, tools to do the changing with, all in a nice little case. Another thing about these guns that's kind of unusual is uh, you can see here, this is your cylinder release here in front of the cylinder instead of behind it like most revolvers have which can be a little bit clumsy until you get used to it. These are a pretty good quality revolver. And since it's got the 8 inch barrel on it right now, that's what we're going to shoot right now. And then at the, after that, I'll show you how to change out the barrel and I suppose I might as well change out the grips too. It's, just, it's a pretty simple process doesn't take very long you can see here the barrels uh, is basically a sleeve the, uh, there's a barrel shroud and then there's the barrel and then there is a locking collet here that uh, allows you to uh, tighten the barrel down to the right uh, tightness See the collet there on this one. Now these are chambered in uh, 357 Magnum or 38 Special. They also made some of these in other calibers. And not all of the Dan Wessons were made with interchangeable barrels, but uh, the ones made back, most of the ones made back in the 70s and early 80s do have the interchangeable barrel system. Anyway, I'll get this camera put on a tripod. We'll load this thing up and we'll fire a few shots through it. And then I'll show you how to change the barrel. And uh, the wind is uh, blowing pretty good today, uh, so it may mess up the audio quality on the, on the video. Uh, when I started out today, the wind wasn't blowing at all, so I didn't bring anything to put over the microphone to muffle the wind and I really won't be able to tell just how badly the wind is messing up the video until I get home and get the files put up on the computer but uh, we'll see how it goes now with this 8 inch barrel with full underlug that does make it very nose heavy on the balance they also made these barrel shrouds in a number of configurations the vent rib with the underlug, vent rib without the underlug, and just a solid rib with no underlug. So there was all sorts of uh, possibilities with this gun. I've got it loaded up with some 357 Magnums, some fairly hot loads. And the heavy barrel does help soak up some of the recoil. And if I was to put those rubber grips on here, that would help a, even more with the recoil. 
you get some uh, 38s in it and well maybe some 357s and 38s so you can see the difference in the recoil okay what I got loaded up right now is uh, one pretty hot 357 Magnum uh, load and 538s so the first shot is going to be a hot 357 and after that it's uh, 38s lot of difference in the recoil between the 38s and the 357s on this gun but uh, with that heavy long barrel on there the 38s are very mild 357s are manageable now uh, like I said uh, I'll show you how you uh, uh, change out the barrels and grips on these well, before we change out the barrel, I'm going to run another cylinder full of 38s through it. These guns are very similar to a Smith & Wesson. They're about the same size as a Smith & Wesson K-frame, maybe just a little bit bigger. this wind is blowing maybe I'll uh, do the part where I show you how to change out the barrels at home on the cleaning table get away from some of this wind because I imagine this wind is kind of messing up the audio quality on this video well before we get around to swapping out the barrel and grips on this gun I want to point out a few other things about it Unlike most revolvers, the cylinder release is here in front of the cylinder. And for everybody that's used to having the cylinder release back here, that may seem a little awkward, but you get used to it. Another thing, look at the blowing on this. They must not have had their uh, blowing solution quite right when they uh, blewed this gun. You can see the the frame has turned kind of plum colored as opposed to uh, here on the side plate and on the barrel where you still got a nice deep blue. Now these guns look a lot like a Smith & Wesson and they were made to compete with Smith & Wesson but the internal lock work is different on them. Say so like your Smith & Wessons the cylinder rotates to the left. On these, it rotates to the right like a Colt does. And you can see here where a Smith & Wesson usually, of this era usually had a hammer block safety and a uh, hammer mounted firing pin. This has a uh, frame mounted firing pin and uses the transfer bar like a Ruger. Now to change these out is fairly simple. Doesn't take all that long. Need this little multi-tool here. This here uh, is for removing the collet on the front of the barrel. And that little uh, Allen wrench there is for uh, the removing the front sight and you've got another little uh, Allen wrench here which we will not need today and then you've got uh, this larger Allen uh, wrench here which you use to remove the grips with now to start out Simply insert this in there. There is a, you can see here there are uh, lugs here. And you get that down in there and you uh, line those lugs up. And then turn that collet 
counterclockwise and just screw it right on out of there uh, difficult doing this reaching around the camera remove that now this uh, barrel shroud will just slide right off so you see that's just a shroud this here is your barrel and once that's off of there you can just screw that barrel right out of the frame You notice uh, there's a lot of threads on one end and just a few on the other. The end with the lot with the most threads, of course, that goes back into your frame. For the moment, we'll just set all that aside. Now we got this little two and a half inch barrel here. Take that lug off of there. Now we screw the new barrel right into the frame. See the cylinder gap there? When we get close you'll be able to see that uh, barrel coming through the frame. Okay, now we're about there and that's where you, this little feeler gauge comes in. We want to set that uh, barrel gap get around here where I can actually see this we're going to set this in there like that and then screw the barrel down onto it not tight we just want it to be uh, just enough so that we've got about a six thousandths uh, gap between the cylinder and the barrel we may have to adjust that as we go now you see there's a pin right here and also a hole for the pin here now that barrel shroud just slips down over there then you take this little uh, blocking ring call it screw that in there And we'll tighten that down. Now when you tighten this down, you don't want it to you want it to be good and snug, but you don't want it to be, you know, terrible tight. Just good and snug. Now we'll pull that feeler gauge out of there. And you should be able to see just a little bit of gap in there. work the action a few times to make sure that it's not binding if it is binding a little bit take everything loose and screw the barrel back out just a little bit you want it to be just where you can just see a little bit of a gap and as far as the barrel uh, changing goes we're done Now we'll take these grips off, change them out as you can see here, just held on with a single uh, 
Allen's screw at the bottom. <laughs> it's kind of a long screw. Now that grip just slides right off. And here's another difference between the uh, Dan Wesson and the uh, Smith and Wesson. Smith and Wessons of this era had a flat mainspring. And you can see here this has got a uh, coil mainspring. And where uh, Smith and Wesson had a grip frame that came down and around like this. This one here just has a lug. But anyway, just uh, slip your new grip on. Replace the screw. This is a lot easier if you don't have to reach around the camera to do it. These rubber grips are kind of ugly compared to those uh, nice wood grips. But when you have a short barrel uh, 357, the rubber grips uh, really help with the recoil. And we're all done with the grip change and the barrel change. Now before you put your, uh, store your barrel, other barrel away, it's always a good idea to uh, set this collet back on here. Just screw it on there easy enough so it doesn't get lost. Set it down in the shroud. This piece is ready to be put away. And that is really all there is to them. So thanks for watching.